Hey folks, Odd uh, here with your quick asteroid update. Um, two new asteroids were just discovered recently today, so now that makes five out of the K-Class, 2013 K-Class. So, um, you guys remember 2013 ET, 2013 EC, right? That came around in March, and then the sun was, or the moon was impacted. Then you had DA-14, which came in, and then a whole bunch of unclassified objects you know, or I should say classified NASA standards hit the Earth. Okay, well, we're now about to enter, enter another bombardment from a destroyed comet. Or is it all part of the uh, celestial bombardment that we are going through as of this time? Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, now all of these dates are currently today. And look at these orbits and look how simu similar they all are. Now, all these objects are coming in from the same exact angle. Now, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on all of them. Just give me a second here. Okay, now, let me go ahead and show you guys something here. Now, KA, 2013 KA, okay, right now is 0.0113 astronomical units. Now, I'm going to show you exactly why this is important. I'm going to backtrack this to the day on its close approach, which was the 17th through 18th. Okay, now here he is. Now, I'm going to put it to the hourly. And I'm going to take it through the 17th. Now, 0 0.0055 astronomical units. 0 0.0054 astronomical units. 0 0.005354. 55. Five. Now it's the 18th, right? Now about this time frame. It was hovering around the same time. Now this time frame. Is when the asteroid hit in my area. Huge explosion here, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania area. Okay. And I live in Panhandle, West V. And me and my wife were sitting down watching TV, and it was about 12.50 at night, and I heard a huge explosion, both of us, and the whole house shook. We were like, man, what the heck was that? First thing I thought was the gas station exploded up the street, the Sheets gas station. Or we were under attack. You know, there was a bright flash and everything. And I was like, man, what was that? And, you know, I started looking online, looking online. Then there's a Facebook page talking about a meteor and people seeing meteors. I went to AMS. They were seeing meteors. You know, Lunar Meteor Hunters blog. Blogspot was talking about it. It was all over the place. Okay, and then... um. After that happened, you know, there was other meteor explosions all over the country. All within 24 hours, around the same exact time frame, between 12.30 to 4 a.m. Okay? And there was four in 24 hours, just in the U.S. alone, not including the one that was spotted in New Zealand, and the one that hit Mexico on the 18th as well, later on that day. And that was a meteorite. It actually hit and caused a 4.0 magnitude earthquake. Then you also have the two meteorites that hit houses in Connecticut over one week period. What was it, two weeks ago? And then the other meteorite that hit the ground in Africa. The same exact day that one of those meteorites hit a house in Connecticut. Some of you might say coincidence. But I think not. <clears throat> we have now entered the cyclical bombardment. And I think that these objects here, 2013 KA, 2013 KB, and then 2013 KT1, and 2013 KS1 are all coming from the same object. Now, was it an exploded comet, or is it all part of a celestial bombardment knocked out by a Kuiper Belt object, KBO. 
Not sure right now. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this real quick. Here's KA. And I'm going to show you where it's going to be at on the 22nd, okay? Just bear with me. You know, seems to be having like a lot of internet problems lately. A lot of people have been complaining to me on my page. Alright, so here we go. Go to the 22nd. Put it on daily. Alright, so this is going to be 0 0.0142 astronomical units away on the 22nd. I'm going to knock this to the 22nd. Knock this to the 22nd. Knock this to the 22nd. Now, KT1's close approach is supposed to be on the 21st. But look, 0 0.0083 astronomical units on the 22nd. KB, 0 0.0081 astronomical units. <coughs> now, KS1, 0 0.0125 astronomical units. And KA, 0 0.0142 astronomical units. And they're all coming in from the same exact angle, as you can see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies are just... Alright, so here we go. Now I'm going to start off with this one, because this right here, its close approach was yesterday. Okay, I'm going to go hourly. See how long it hovered around yesterday? Now it's on 22nd, like always. Okay, now hold on, let me just go ahead and fix this. Sorry. Kind of early, just trying to get this info out. Just recently discovered these. Okay, so here we go. Here's KT1. Now let me go ahead. Everybody already knows about KB and how long it's going to be hovering around 82 or 00 or 0 0.0082 through 818082. 24 hours. Same thing with this object. Same thing with this object. Okay. Now this is KS1. Now I want to go ahead because I'm running out of time here. I want to go ahead and show you guys exactly what I mean here, but hold on. First, I'm just I'm going to show you guys how long this hovers around as well. I'm going to knock it back a little bit. See, see how it shows it coming in really, really fast? And then all of a sudden, boom, slows down. See that? Look how long it's on. One, two, three, one, two, four. 125 all day but look after you pass by the 242526 mark look at that it just starts shooting itself back up does that make any sense to you that this object is coming in so fast and then all of a sudden it just slows down does that make any sense now that's KS1 the same thing is happening with KB1. Their close approach dates are the 22nd. Now, I'm going to show you. 2013 KA had a condition code of 7. Now, was that the object that exploded into pieces on the 18th, 17th, late at night? that everybody felt and seen across the whole US and backside pieces of this object slammed into Mexico parts of New Zealand seen it but mainly on the North American continent uncertainty Okay, the data arc span was only one day. Okay, the observations used was 19. And as you can see, the first observations used was 05-16-2013. The last observations used was 2013-05-17. Now, you guys can check this out for yourself. Now, on to 2013 KT1. This object was recently dis recently discovered on 2013 05 18. 
Now, why were the observations 82 on this object? Data arc span two days. Now the condition code is five. Now look at their uncertainty levels. They look like they pretty much have a hold on it, right? I mean, 3.4, that's, that's, that's relatively good. Especially if you look at 0.00041512, which is for asteroid KA2013, with a condition code of 7, with four large fireball reports over the United States that day. Now let me go ahead and show you what I mean. May 18th, May 18th, May 18th, May 18th. 60 reports, Connecticut, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, West Virginia. Seven reports, Arizona, Illinois, Indiana, or I'm sorry, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Missouri, and Oklahoma. 93 reports, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana. Eight reports, Arizona, Arkansas, and Utah. That's 168 reports, folks. Coinkadink? I don't think so. Then you take in Mexico that got hit with that meteorite that caused a 4.0 magnitude earthquake, not including the, you know, the meteorite spotted over New Zealand. You know, then we also had a bombardment a little earlier beforehand with two meteorites hitting in Connecticut homes. Two homes were hit in Connecticut in, within a week, and then the meteorite fall in Africa. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the other condition codes. Now this is 2013 KB, I know we've been over this one before, but as you can see, the total observations used were 15, okay? The data arc span was only one day. The first observations used was 0516 2013. Last observations used was on the 17th. Condition code 8. Now look at the uncertainty for this one. 0 0.0019399. Why aren't they evaluating it? They just give up after 15, you know? Then you come over here, and they use 82 observations, two days from 18th through the 20th. And look at their uncertainty levels. Does that make any sense? You know, in this object here, is 2013 KT1. Now, we come here to KB. You already see what I mean here. 15. What about KA? 19. Condition code 7. KB, condition code 8. What does condition code mean, again, for a refresher? Condition code MPCU, parameter. Orbital uncertainty estimate 0 through 9, with 0 being good and 9 being highly uncertain. Now, I'm going to explain to you why that's important. This means that they do not know where the object is really going. They're just taking an estimated guess. Here's KS1, okay? Let me show you this one. A 22-day, or sorry, only 2-day arc span. Okay, and this was 17th through the 19th. They used a total amount of 22 observations, uncertainty level, down low, and condition code for this object is also 8. Now, let me show you something else. This is the little arrow pointed old comet that they are talking about that was supposedly destroyed from the sun as it entered through Mercury, so on and so forth. Now, this object's close approach will be on the 31st. Okay. At 0 0.039 astronomical units. Now, let me show you the condition code for this. This is 1998 QE2. Condition code 0. Look how certain they are. 9.5077. Now, also, now I think that that might be part of something, but this object also is coming in close right there okay look at the uncertainty for this this is 2004 BV 102 zero see what I mean they know these objects 
That's what I'm saying, folks. Please be safe. Much love.